Okay, in this episode today, we're gonna to take a look at doing uh, C4 Corvette suspension in 55 to 59 um, Chevy pickups. I mean, mind you, GMCs, whatever. Sometimes I do them in Ford trucks. Uh, I don't know if that's blaspheming or not, but generally I get asked to put them in anything you can, but it just takes a lot of configuration and a lot of geometry to work it all out. Because this Corvette suspension, you know, it twigs a lot especially the rear suspension is a little bit like Volkswagen. You drop it here, you drop it there. Everybody wants to airbag the damn thing. And uh, that's fine as long as you're riding at right height. But uh, if you drop it to the ground, it'll twig like a Volkswagen. If you ride it up in the air, it'll twig again in another direction. So you technically cannot drive it any height you want. Um, so generally I put in at what ride height and if the guys put airbags in, they dump it to the ground. And when they drive, they lift it up and uh, away they go. Okay, this is kind of a scratch built frame. Uh, usually, sometimes I do them on an original frame. That would be probably a typical thing for Australia or so, where they got to comply to certain rules and certain grafting done and you know, all about the year and everything. But over here, uh, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. Uh, it's all about the smog more than anything, but uh, it's just quicker for me to do a nice box frame. Uh, without mandrel bend in, well, that's okay if you've got the bucks in your pocket, but uh, a lot of people don't want to pay that money, so I'm kind of that in-between sort of guy. Okay, for those that kind of don't really know, we have the C4 suspension. There is the early one, you know, the 84 to 87, then the 88 to 96. Now, a lot of guys say, well, I wanted to use the narrow one because I want that width. Hey, it's only three quarters of an inch each side, so if you're that desperate for your wheel width, Oh, I get it, I get it. But see, here's one disadvantage to that is you've only got single piston front brake calipers. Uh, and on the back, you, in the disc, you've got the brake shoes incorporated. But the later one, okay, it's a little wider. But you can, uh, I usually put Corvette rims on and actually most of the time I've got to put a spacer on to bring it out to the fender wells because I don't want cookie cutters underneath. So, you know, it's personal opinion, but 99% of the time I use the wider suspension for the early ones. Um, I don't narrow uh, the C4 at all. If you narrow the rear end, yeah, you can do it, but it screws around with the damn geometry. I just like building them in such a way that if you smash something or something breaks, all the components that I use are factory Corvette parts. No adjustable parts, nothing like all my falling sets up or dog bones, I call them bat wings across the end, I call them, you know, they're all factory. Everything just bolts in. When I finish the frame, you bolt it in and away you go. And I put it in at ride height. So that means that, tell me how high you want your vehicle, sit it on the ground over there. How far do you want the fenders off the ground? How far do you want it on the ground? And I'll adjust it to put it in. So it'll think it's still in a Corvette but we filled it, it's in a Chevy truck. Now, if we take a look at the front suspension, we'll get a bit of an idea how that transverse leaf spring works. Let's look at this part, see down inside there, there's the uh, transverse leaf spring. Um, pretty well, and there I do do some adjustable shocks area. Okay, so let's take a little bit of a look at the front end. I mean, I kind of do this different than everyone else and have a reason. But, um, this one, yeah, I got some gusset plates there. Yep, 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 they can be a bit ugly to certain people. But then again, if you drive it off a cliff, at least I'll know that piece stays together and the rest will fall apart. But, uh, but I rise it up that way because that's kind of the way it is in the Corvette. Um, and then I incorporate, uh, yes, the Corvette. Uh, there it is, subframe under there. I do put it in, it's just easier. I do do some without it, but that's just the way it is. Now in the back here, this is actually one of my methods. I did make this as a uh, kit, but I couldn't be bothered selling it because all people are gonna do is just copy it. So I just welded it in myself. But as you can see, um, it's a lot wider than the chassis. Um, then I have my own little torque arm here. It looks pretty but it's better than putting that fella across here. I kind of put out there, call it artistic license. So here we are, here it is, kind of this rear end's tidied up a little bit. This is the C4, um, has all the original stuff. There's the leaf spring. This one's lowered down a little bit because that depends how high you, you adjust those uh, rear um, bolts there. So um, kind of this is what you get. There's my little torque arm there. 
Uh, yeah, as you can see by me bouncing up and down on the suspension, it's pretty stiff for a transverse leaf spring. It rides pretty nice in the car. Yeah, you can have some little issues in the front if you're using a cast iron uh, block. You'll have to use a heavier leaf spring. A lot of guys go to coilovers, but um, if you know the right spring to put in, rides pretty good. But if you use an early suspension, that leaf spring's not normally strong enough. You'll probably need about a 600 pounder in there and you'll be okay. Yeah, kind of over the years, I played around with a lot of different powder coating, but uh, this frame I come down is my favorite. This is silver fane gray. But on the top of that, I put a clear coat. And I kind of like that because you can kind of wipe over it. You just put regular paint or anything on it, unless you're putting some sort of glossy paint. Eventually, just all the grease and grime and road grime attached to itself, and you have all sorts of problems, but this is kind of pretty nicely done and it gives a like a little bit of artistic license to under your vehicle.